Okay, guys, so today I'm going to break down my 25-month off testosterone and anabolic steroids uh, blood work here. So this was taken on December 6th. It is now December 15th. This was 11 days out from this me coming up. So we're going to see how everything looks here. So it's interesting. Anyway. What I got checked here, ins fasted insulin. So 4.3 you're going to see. That is really, really good. That is, uh, you know, Paul Saladino talks about this a lot. Fasted insulin is probably the most important thing to check on blood work. Um, it's a really cheap test. It doesn't cost much. It's like 10 bucks, And it really shows how insulin sensitive you are. So he... I think Paul's always like 2.5 or something like that. But so I'm not quite as insulin. Like he's like mega insulin sensitive as low as you could possibly be. But 4.3 is really good. Um, you just want that number as low as possible. So that was really encouraging to see. Because nowadays a lot of the research they're showing is that it's insulin resistance that is the root cause of heart attacks, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. So LDL was long thought to be the culprit, but a lot of the research now is showing that it's insulin resistance. And this is one of the, this is the number one test you can take to see if you're insulin resistant. So 4.3, really happy with that. And diet hasn't been tremendously clean and it still was 4.3. So I was like, well, that's good. Um, so it could be tight enough for sure where I could get that possibly lower, but I'll take it. C-reactive protein, 0.7. So this was uh, quite low as well. But there could be a little inflammation going on, which C-reactive protein kind of shows uh, a greater picture of the inflammation levels in your body. Uh, so I think this was not su – it was low. It was pretty dang low. But I was sick during this test. I'm still sick. I'm getting over it, dealing with congestion. But I was at the peak of the illness when I had this done which could set off a little inflammation right there, although it's really good. Now let's actually go down to the NMR lipid profile test, which is kind of cool because it shows a breakdown of everything. So LDL was 1359, so it's kind of high. But like I said, LDL is not the end-all be-all of what they once thought it to be, 132 here. It's not, you know, it's not great, but it's not terrible. Triglycerides, 68, HDL, 68. So we got bad cholesterol, 132, HDL, 68. Roughly a 2 to 1 ratio, not bad at all. Um, I'm not going to stress over that, guys. I'm really not. It's, it's one of those things where it's like LDL, the research is showing, is not what it once was. And I was on a statin at certain times, but I haven't been on for a while. So pretty happy with it overall. Now, HDL was in the very, the HDL particle count, hot, it was at the high end of the reference range, which is the lowest cardiovascular disease risk. So that's what's cool about an NMR chart. It'll show you this breakdown. It'll show you like exactly where they think you're at as far as your cardiovascular risk. So low cardiovascular risk here, small LDL particle number, um, 416, it was 212 when I was on a statin, so it was really low. But again, that's in the uh, probably 65th percentile for cardiovascular risk. And LDL size, again, is in a good range where they're bigger. You want the particles to be bigger. Larger cholesterol particles are much less risk than smaller cholesterol particles. Then we go down here to the insulin sensitivity chart, and I'm in the top 25th percentile with large VLDL. You got the small LDL over here again, large HDL. So if you look at this chart, most of my stuff is in the very insulin sensitive category. Everything's to the left, which is what you want to see. So that's awesome. This, this is encouraging because not only did I show you my fasted insulin was 4.3, but my insulin resistance score was below 25. I'm in like the top 10 per 10th percentile, top 90th percentile, whatever you want to say. 
as far as insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity. So really good, very insulin sensitive. That's a good sign. That's a good sign of overall health. Let's go up here. Lipoprotein little a, here it is again, 262. I don't, this is entirely genetic. But then lipoprotein little a is a cardiovascular disease risk. Because it's like a, it's like having LDL with a fish tail that is much stickier and can block up the arteries. So what I think I'll do in a couple of years, I will get another CAC score, calcium coronary artery score done. And I'm going to see if it's higher than it was when I was 27. Because when I was 27, I had a 2 score for a calcium score. And I'm going to check it again when I'm 35 and we'll see the plaque build up. Because this is what I'm most concerned about. And actually, the one thing that can lower this, I've tried everything. Nothing lowers this. I've had three tests done with this, 262, 243, 240. The one thing that really lowers it is supposedly uh, TRT. So I don't know to what degree, but that's interesting. That's something to take note of. Because that would be, this is the one thing that I'm worried about. Because I, I literally, there's no way to lower it. I've researched everything on it and outside of TRT. Nothing lowers it. So estradiol 15, note this, it's not good. That's too low. I want my estradiol to be 30, 30 plus. 30 to 40 would be ideal. So that's the problem, which is why you see testosterone at 271. Yes, so 271 is terrible, but... You know, I've checked my testosterone on labs about 10 times in the last two years. And highest it's been is 409. 409, 406 on two panels. 271 after 25 months is quite disappointing. I'm not going to lie. So that was kind of a tough hit. Free testosterone has never gotten above 10 since I've been off. Again, that sucks. So that's disappointing. 9.5 here. I don't know. You know, I'm not ruling out at some point TRT. Like re real TRT, like 100 milligrams, 75 milligrams a week to get me to uh, a six, 700 test level. I'm not ruling that out, especially if we go back to lipoprotein little a, especially if it would significantly lower this because you, you do not want this high. So I'm not ruling it out. I'm going to keep rolling a little longer at least. I keep thinking at some point it will has to go up, and it really hasn't significantly. And I've checked it like 10 times, so it's not like I don't have the data. Like, it's not like I just checked it once and it was low. It just is a reoccurring theme here. So I wonder if there's some kind of damage here because the LH and FSH is sky high. There's The signaling is happening. My body is signaling to the pituitary gland to produce it, but the conversion is not coming through, which you can see here because this is too low, this is too low, and this is too low. All three of these should be higher. The estradiol should be higher, the free testosterone should be higher, and the total testosterone should be higher. But the signaling is sky high. The signaling is there. So there's some kind of damage, I think, in the in the loop with what's going on here with the pituitary gland from the nine years of cycling. Because LH being this high could even be an indicator of the damage because my body's trying to signal to produce it, but it's not coming through. And that's what I think is going on because all these are, are sky high, but there's just not the conversion. So disappointing. I don't know. It is what it is, guys. I'm uh, gives you a lot to think about. <sighs> Hemoglobin 5.1, really good. A A1C, I should say. So very happy with that. Again, showing I'm very insulin sensitive. Quite happy with that. Iron was pretty much the same as last time, 278. Um, 87 iron saturation was a little lower, but it's, it's all, those were all normal. TSH, this is the lowest it's ever been in my life, which is good. You want a lower TSH, that means healthier thyroid output. Um, so I ran an experiment. I took high dose iodine for a year. Um, I think it was seven, seven and a half milligrams of iodine. And 7.5 milligrams of potassium iodide. Took it for a year. My TSH got up to 9. 
Then I came off, it dropped to 4.3, and even longer off, it's at 2 now. So it, I believe the experiment worked because iodine, when you're taking it, will give a false reading where your TSH is very high, but then it comes down afterwards. So it appears to have helped my thyroid function because I have never been even close to 2.0 for uh, TSH, which is awesome. That's uh, It's starting to get down to where it should be for a normal person. So really happy with that. T4 came up. I mean, this is this is really good stuff here. I'm really happy with that. Cholesterol, again, we're kind of going back to this. LDL 134, I'm not going to worry about that. HDL 67, triglycerides 63. So triglycerides, again, great indicator of insulin sensitivity. So my triglycerides, my insulin, and the whole insulin sensitivity panel were all super good. Um really happy with that not on any statins or anything a to g ratio i'm gonna have to look more into again because this was high last time and it's always high so i don't know what's the deal there because i truly don't know enough about albumin i know these are proteins globulin albumin but don't know exactly why globulin is so low relatively and why albumin is so high i have to look into that AST, ALT, liver enzymes were a little higher because I had been training hard in the days preceding it. Same with creatinine, which gets affected by muscle mass. Um, creatinine is basically showing your kidney function and that sort of thing. But it's skewed it's skewed by muscle mass. It's skewed by heavier body weight. So you got to get to statin C. But I am feel fine about my kidneys. I'm not worried at all about them. Glucose, 85. BUN, 15. So that stuff's all all right. Eosinophils is uh, elevated with allergies, which are constantly a thing where I live. The neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio is elevated as an inflammation marker because of this cold. This, again, was when the cold was at its peak, so the neutrophils tend to go up, whereas you see usually it's around 2.9. That's also affected by the white blood cells, which are 8, showing that I was sick. Those go up as well when you're fighting off an illness. Hemoglobin, red blood cells, and hematocrit went up a little bit as well, probably from the vitamin B complex I've been taking. So it's kind of cool here. Like, guys, you should check your NMR panel every once in a while. It's kind of interesting to see. It'll show your insulin sensitivity, cardiovascular disease risk, and all that kind of thing. So it's, it's kind of cool to get it checked out. But, yeah, that's pretty much the panel. Um let me know what you guys think. I'll be competing Saturday. And appreciate you guys watching.